Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson is an astrophysicist at the American Museum of Natural History. Dr. Tyson, good morning. It's good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Is this a rare occurrence or is it just rare that it happened in this populated area and that we have these incredible images? Well, based on explosion air bursts that we've seen in the past, this could happen perhaps once a decade. In fact, in the 1990s, there was an air blast possibly of similar magnitude that occurred in the airspace between India and Pakistan at a sensitive time when they were talking about nuclear disarmament, or rather nuclear armament, and knowledge that it was an air blast helped diffuse some of the concern that perhaps there was a first strike in progress. So if we take that as an example, and this perhaps once a decade or so, remember most of Earth is water. If this happens over the Pacific, no one would necessarily see it. Well, right, and when we see it happen in a populated area, one imagines the outcome could have been even worse if it hit a big city like yeah, Manhattan, correct? Of, of course, and it's that air blast. It's a shock wave, basically. I mean, the physics of it is this asteroid is coming in. It hits Earth's atmosphere, and it feels like a brick wall to it because of how fast it's moving. And when you hit a brick wall, you basically explode, and that's what happened here, and it exploded in midair. That shock wave shatters glass, or anything sort of fragile and breakable, over a huge radius. Remember the Oklahoma City mm -hmm. bomb that destroyed the building it hit, but of course, much glass was broken in the surrounding area. That's the effect of a shock wave air blast of an explosion of this kind. This seems to have come without warning. Is this the sort of thing that, that scientists aren't able to detect in the atmosphere? Yeah, below a certain size asteroid, they come in without warning, exactly. Above a certain size, our radar can detect them. The military certainly has a smaller threshold for what they can see coming in. But by the time you see these coming in, there's no defense against them. And so something this size was not, it's not going to render the human species extinct. Uh, something large enough that we can detect would, and that's what we're really focusing on at this point. And let me just click, let you weigh in on one thing. Do you think this has no relation to this 2012 D14 asteroid that is supposed to brush by Earth today? Yeah, th that, that next asteroid is going to come by, as your graphic showed, it's going to dip below the orbits of our communication satellites. So it's kind of like a buzz cut to Earth. Uh, that will happen so many hours from now. From, by my read of the dynamics of the solar system, these just happens to be a coincidence. If it were not a coincidence, you would see many more of these between now and when that big one comes by. Because what happens is you get an asteroid that breaks up from the gravitational stress as it nears bodies during its life. And so the asteroid yeah. becomes a train of, of, a train of objects that would then come and hit one right after another. This is so many hours before the, the, the next a asteroid will hit. I, it's, it's unlikely. Mm -hmm. All right, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson with our science lesson for a Friday. Thank you very much. It's good to have your we'll perspective. We'll survive the day, just <laughs> I promise. <laughs> good, good to hear that.